Hi there, friends. This is Leah with Pinkfresh, and looks like we've got this all set up. So I am just going to wait until I see people starting to comment and say hi, just to find out if you're here. Okay, and I'm going to get it pulled up on my phone. All right, it looks like we're live and all is well. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Heather and Teresa, thanks for joining me. Okay, so I am going to get this all set up on my phone real quick. Hello, Debbie and Lori, thanks for joining me today. So let me get this up on my phone. Okay, and I think I have that turned down. Perfect, okay, all right, well, I, I'm so happy that you guys are here to join me today. So this is technically um, our final live of 2020. So um, kind of crazy, even though it's been quite a year, uh, it's actually gone really quickly, I think. So um, with that being said, we are not doing Facebook Live on Wednesday or Thursday. So uh, this is your one live this week, except for Saturday, which is technically in 21. Um, we will be doing craft hour with Jeff and a really fantastic guest. She's one of your favorite card makers. Um, we're gonna start off 2021, right? So we're excited for you guys to join us on Saturday. Um, we had a lot of technical difficulties and ended up basically having to cancel craft hour a couple weeks ago. So here is hoping that this coming Saturday goes um, much smoother uh, and, and easier for our lovely host, Jeff. I know that he was super upset and struggling with that. So, um, but sometimes technology happens that way. So, all right. Hello there, Glenda Liz. Glenda Liz? <laughs> I never say that right, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so um, only live this week until Saturday. Um, and then we will see you on Saturday. So we hope that you guys have a wonderful New Year's uh, celebration this week. Um, and then of course, um, there, as always, um, just reading a comment here. Oh, Lori, that's because I have not quite figured out how to schedule a um, live session and then have Zoom use that live session. So I have to just schedule it automatically from Zoom into um, our YouTube channel. So hopefully I can take some time soon and figure out how to um, see a scheduled piece. But we always have, we always send out those emails and we always put a little swipe up feature in our Instagram stories. Okay, so before we flip this camera around and get started, uh, don't forget that we draw a uh, winner of a $15 gift card um, for every um, live episode. So uh, comment with me, um, share this video to your Facebook, um, your Facebook page or to a friend or if there is a group that you're a part of that um, allows videos to be shared, share there. And that is... Um, an extra entry and just let us know here that you shared. So other than that, um, we're going to make a New Year's card together today. So I was extremely um, inspired by a couple of cards that our friend Mona Toth, and I have no idea if I say that correctly, anyway, um, that she has created recently where she actually combined a couple of our background clean stamps. So I am going to create a card inspired by her using a couple of our clean stamps that were just on sale this past weekend. So uh, if you happen to um, grab a couple and uh, add them to your Pink Fresh goodies, uh, this will be a card that will be easy and fun to recreate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my camera switched around here. So just bear with me while we make that transition. Okay, so I think we've got that. And then I'm going to let YouTube um, catch up with me. 
a little bit. So I've prepped some stuff today. You're going to see here, I have a bunch of snowflakes already pre-cut. Um, and so we're going to make a really fun New Year's card, very pastel. So this is the background we're going to create together today. And I know that on camera, uh, the the tone on tone might be a little bit harder to see, but it is so amazing in real life. And um, so we are going to create this background together. Um, and uh, maybe Mona will join us and I can say again that um, I was so inspired by the way that she combined um, these backgrounds together that I wanted to create one as well. Mine, hers is super colorful and gorgeous. Mine is a little bit more muted and pastel-y, um, but I'm excited to share this with you. So uh, first things first, um, we need to get a sheet of pink cardstock, which of course I did the only thing that I forgot to pre-cut. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we are going to use this really light pink cardstock. And for time purposes, I have stuff already set up in my Misties. So up first, we're going to use the Diamond Tiles Cling Stamp. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Kathy and Becca and Peggy and Annalise and Natalie. Thanks for joining me today, Natalie. Okay, so make sure when you uh, set up your MISTI for background stamps that you pull out the foam piece because um, you don't need that for cling stamps because they're thicker than clear stamps. And then go ahead and just arrange your background so that it will um, fit edge to edge on your cardstock. And I can already tell that I'm going to need to move these snowflakes out of the way because the little bit of static electricity in my house is going to cause them to hang, stick to my misty. So we're just going to shove them back a little. There we go. Oh, Lori, thank you so much for saying that. We, we appreciate hearing comments like that. We have really enjoyed creating all of this new product for you this year. And we look forward to bringing you more in 2021 that you love. So thank you so much for that kind compliment. Okay, so we are going to ink up the Diamond Tiles background stamp. This is my very favorite background um, that we created this year. It's just so modern and perfect. And I'm gonna ink it up in ballet slipper. So I will meant say that it might not show up very well in video. Um, I hope it does, but it's possible that it won't. I am going to double stamp just because I want to make sure that I get a really good impression. Um, and also ballet slipper is very, very light. And so while it's perfect for tone on tone with this very, very pale pink cardstock as well, um, I want it to show through um, at least a bit. So double stamping is super helpful for that. Oops, I might have smudged that. All right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and stamp it. You always get a really great impression. What I have noticed is that right here where the uh, joint meets the misty, I always have a little bit of a little uh, stamping not go. So I just press down real nice and hard on that side. And there it is. And I have a feeling it probably doesn't show up. It's probably very faint, but we're gonna stamp it one more time. Yes, Heather is my partner in crime today. Well, she's always my partner in crime, but she is uh, the moderator or the person behind the Pink Fresh comments today. Oh, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. We like each other, so it's a good thing we're, we, we are definitely a dynamic duo. Okay, so let's stamp this one more time. Hi, Pauline. Thanks for joining us. Okay, and there we have one more round. And I can see it fairly well on my laptop screen, but it's uh, 
I think my phone screen is just a tad brighter. And so I can't see it as well on my phone. So I think it just depends on the screen you're using, but I promise you, you get this really beautiful tone on tone look um, that just looks amazing. So something that I learned while I was prepping for this um, card was even though dye ink is quick drying, um, you actually cannot heat emboss to it immediately because it needs time to soak into the cardstock that you have stamped it on. So while it may not, it may not um, smudge to the touch, it is still actually soaking into that cardstock. So we are going to heat emboss the next layer on to this. But what I'm going to say is if you wanted to recreate this card, what I would do is I would stamp your diamond tile background. I would do some die cutting, which is essentially what I did. I would do some die cutting or um, just prep some other things first to give the ink some time to soak into the paper and then go ahead and do the next step that we're going to do. So what I have done is I have actually already pre-stamped this onto this, you know, basically done the same thing and pre-stamped it to give it a little bit of time to soak in. And then we're gonna do this next step, which is heat embossing the, um, the next background stamp. So just so you know, um, Definitely, and I had no idea that was actually a thing until I tried to heat emboss directly on it and I started having um, uh, embossing powder stick to the diamond tiles and I was like, wait, why is it doing that? <laughs> so, oh, got his hello, Lana, thanks for joining. Um, let's see, okay, perfect. Okay. I was just catching up on some comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so here is where this background becomes a little bit more magical. So I'm going to put it into my second Misty that I have set up. If you don't have two Misty's, all you would do is just pull your other one out and line this back up. So this is our pop out diamonds stamp set. As you can see, I've pulled all of the pieces out of it. I've pulled it away from its frame. Um, because I don't need all of those other chunks. I do typically leave these little ones in there just because they, they don't mess with any of the stamping. And then we are going to find the best place. Now, some of this will overlap. Um, not a big deal. I think I mainly kind of center it on this um, piece of diamond tile right here. And just kind of... Um, frame up your diamond tile and then go ahead and get it on your misty. So now this one has these very thin lines right here. I'm not too worried about them because I'm actually going to end up trimming them away with a, um, a background die. So, but if you were planning on keeping them four and a quarter by five and a half, all you have to kind of do is rub your finger along it and it will put um, that line back in place better. But I'm not too worried because I'm gonna trim that away. Okay, so what you wanna do is you want to make sure that you definitely douse your stamped paper with a good amount of powder, with a powder tool. Because we want the embossing powder to really only stick to the diamond, the pop out diamond background. So I'm gonna just ink it up in a little bit of embossing ink. Oops, and I did get, looks like I got a little powder on my hand. So let's wipe that down so it doesn't interfere. All right, I'm gonna ink this up with some embossing ink. And I'll probably, stamp this a couple times just to make sure that I get a good impression on it. Typically, 
rubber stamps are fine and they will give you a good impression the first time, but I'm kind of the queen of stamping twice just to make sure. I also am not very good at applying very much pressure. So I always feel double stamping makes it so assures, it assures me that I got a good stamp impression and I can actually see that one. Okay, so then go ahead and take your entire stamped panel out and we are going to cover this in embossing powder. I, Barb, I'm actually going to emboss it in gold, but I think it would look amazing embossed in white as well. Um, so that might be something that I try next. Okay. And as you can see, I did have a little bit stick um, because it, I guess it wasn't that long ago that I had stamped this panel, but this one, because I let it sit for a little bit, it flipped right off. And there is what there is what it looks like. And now we're gonna heat set it. Let me just get this embossing powder put away and get my little space wiped off because I really don't love when there is powder all over. Okay, this might get a little bit loud at first, but I believe Zoom does actually um, turn it down after it realizes that there is a um, loud noise going on. I don't know about you, but I still find the process of melting embossing powder to be so magical. I don't ever get over how amazing it is. So we are, here is what that looks like. Soft and subtle. This is definitely a very subtle um, look, but I just love how it turned out. So thank you, Mona. I don't know if she has joined on or if she's here today, but thank you so much for the inspiration on using those two backgrounds together. And I foresee myself using these together um, quite often. And Annalise, I agree. I think this would look really lovely in Boston white as well. And I might try that with my other panel that I stamped just a little bit ago and see what that looks like. Okay. So with that being done, so you're going to see why I'm not, I wasn't too worried about making sure that that outer line was really straight. And that is because I'm going to trim it off because I am going to use our Essentials Stitched Rectangles, the largest one. And you'll notice that it actually fits right inside of those lines. So I don't really, uh, they're not gonna stay, they are not gonna stay on the card. So I wasn't real worried about them. All right, I see some other people have joined us. D and Meg and Linda and um, Peggy. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you guys are here today on our final live of 2020. Um, we won't be doing lives the rest of this week until Saturday when we have um, another episode of Craft Hour that you are definitely not going to want to miss because it's with one of your favorites. Uh, we're starting 2021 off right. So Definitely be sure to join us on Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, I'm just going to die, die cut this real quick. Alrighty. And then 
And that is what it looks like all die cut. And I've got this really lovely stitched edge um, because you know me, I love, I'm a big fan of the nice um, polished and finished edges that only a metal die can give. So I'm a big fan of that. Plus I'm gonna be using the inner um, stitched scallop die. So I like to have that stitched edge on that. So, um, and yes, Jeff will be there. Jeff is our host um, and he is on craft hour every other Saturday. Um, but we also typically have a guest and um, we're really very excited about our guest this week. She's one of our faves. Okay, so let's see the next the next part we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to start just um, in some ways assembling this card, um, but not fully. So I'm not going to be sticking anything down quite yet. Um, but here is that um, the stitched scallop rectangle, and I've cut it in gold foil. Uh, I also cut it in white cardstock and stacked them and then added some foam tape. Um, Meg, I'm not sure what I put in upside down, um, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really sure what you mean there. Okay, so I have also already pre die cut the sentiment. Um, I've used the Happy New Year sentiment, and that is from our Happy Holidays Phrase Builder die set, which gives you... Um, all of these different sentiment options. You've got happy holidays, happy new year, merry Christmas, season's greetings, and then for our um, friends in the UK, you also have happy Christmas as well. Um, oh, hi, Margarita. Thanks for joining me. No worries that you're late. Um, we always save these to our channel afterwards so you can go back and rewatch anything you might've missed. Um, so oh, anyway, I die cut the Happy New Year sentiment from the same gold foil paper that I cut the scalloped rectangle. D, I agree. I have been using these scalloped rectangles a ton as well. They're such a great little frame or accent piece for your cards. Um, I just think that they're really super fun. Okay, so I, you're gonna see, I'm gonna fuss around a little bit here and kind of place that sentiment. But all I'm really doing is I'm getting ready to figure out where I want to put all of those snowflakes. So as you might've seen up here in the corner of my desk, I have a bunch, well, basically all of our snowflakes cut along with their shadow from our layered snowflake die set. So this is that die set here. It comes with all of these gorgeous snowflakes plus their shadow. So one thing, one tip that I have for you that I typically do when I'm using this die set is I will actually just um, cut a um, piece of white cardstock in half. Um, not like you are doing a top folding A2 card, um, but like a long, like a portrait one. So basically you end up with a sheet of white cardstock that is five and a half by eight and a half. And I will put all of the snowflakes onto the sheet of cardstock. And then I will put a metal shim over top of it because these are quite intricate, as you can see. Um, I will put a metal shim on it and I will die cut them all out at the same time. And then I will do the same process again with the vellum, in vellum with the shadow layer. And basically, um, it, I, I basically take just a little bit of time to get all of those little middles and pieces cut out. And then I have a bunch of snowflakes ready to go. And, um, and then the next time I need snowflakes because I love snow and I love snowflakes and I love winter cards and Christmas cards. And so it's not like they're gonna go to waste in my house. So, um, Oh, okay, somebody's asking me about the foiled. Okay, this foiled paper, 
I believe is um, from a die cuts with a view. Um, uh, one of those like six by six foil pads. Um, I kind of just grab foil paper here and there randomly as I see it. And I don't love all versions of foil paper. We don't sell it at Pink Fresh. Um, but I, this, this one is die cuts with the view and I do like it. I like that it's a little bit lighter gold. And even though it is mirrored, it's not, um, I think maybe the lighter gold helps that. So hopefully that helps. Um, okay. So we've got all of these snowflakes and I'm not going to use them all on this card, but I have them all available so that I can kind of start configuring where I want them to go on my card. I knew I wanted to make sure that I, I left a little spot down here in the lower left corner of the card to um, add a, a, a nice grouping of snowflakes. So this one right here is one of my faves, but I think I'm going to maybe put him right here. And you'll see what I'm gonna do. And the reason why I didn't stick everything down is I am going to actually keep some over top of the um, frame, but I'm gonna tuck some underneath as well. So then I think I really like this one and I think he's gonna go right here on top as well, but I'm gonna stick one underneath. And mostly I'm needing to judge a little bit of the underneath. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tuck this guy under here. I might lift this up a little and take this off. Oh, I'm just making a mess, but that's okay. Cause this is just about getting like a, a judgment, like a guide in a way. Perfect. So I like how that guy is in there. So then, okay, I'm making hot, a little bit of a hot mess. Okay, so then we know this guy's gonna come on top. This guy's gonna go right here. And I feel like I need to place one somewhere else kind of tucked underneath. So maybe up here, we'll do one of these smaller triangles. Maybe, or triangles, these are snowflakes, not triangles, goodness, Leah. All right, oh yeah, I kind of like that guy. And actually, I feel like we need a little spot over here too. Maybe this guy. Okay, kind of perfect. So we are gonna save these two and set them aside because they're gonna go on the top. So I'm gonna just move off the snowflakes I don't need and we're gonna move this off. Okay, so let's start to focus on the snowflakes that are gonna go underneath and let's get them glued together with a little bit of liquid glue. Yes, I love these snowflakes too. They are so pretty. I love that there's so many different options and I love that you used them on your Christmas cards this year. That's fantastic. Let's see, we're just gonna add a little bit of liquid glue. I really only ever glue the centers because I don't mind um, if they pop up a little bit from the background layer because um, I'll probably end up pop it, popping them up a little bit anyway or zhuzhing them as Laura Basson likes to say. Um, let's see. Oh, someone was saying die cuts with the view old school. Yeah. I mean, they have been around for a long time, but, um, they still come out with some really great foil papers and glitter papers. So, okay. So I think I had that guy about there and we're just going to go ahead and glue it down. I'm gonna to try to check comments a little bit while I'm doing this because really we're now we're just kind of gluing some stuff. Yes, I love these snowflakes too. I love that how delicate and whimsical they are. Um, and I love that you get so many different options. Let me just make sure I like how that's gonna let's push it out a little bit more. The great thing about the liquid glue is that it gives you some time 
to really make sure that you like the placement that you have. Now, I kind of love on this one how um, it looks if you off center it from your background. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one off center with the with the shadow layer, and it will just even add a little bit more um, very subtle dimension to my card. So I'm going to go off center from the background there. Okay. Oh yes, I think that's really cute. Okay, let's get some glue on the back of this. I agree with you. Um, where did that comment go? Uh oh, where did it go? Oh, Cheryl, right there. That this card reminds you of a glass of champagne. I'm so glad you said that because that was um, kind of my intention. I wanted it to look like kind of a sparkling glass of champagne because, you know, it's New Year and um, everyone loves a little bit of champagne on New Year's on New Year's Eve. So I'm glad you said that. That was pretty much exactly what I'm going for. So I'm glad that you kind of got the feeling of it. <laughs> oh, Loria, I know I'm a rebel making that uh, going off going a little off centered with that background. All right, so we are close to done with this bottom layer. And this one, we're just gonna tuck up here. Let me make sure I like how that looks. Let's actually put it out a little more. Okay. That is perfect. So I am now gonna trim the excess off of each, each side here because I don't want the snowflakes to stick that far off. Oh, I don't like those for doing that. I don't want these snowflakes to stick. Like I still want this to be able to go into an envelope basically. Perfect, okay. Do this one. This one has a little bit more to trim. Uh, so for the snowflakes, um, they're a great set. I think that their price point for how many dies that you get is awesome. So I think you really have to judge if like, you really, I love snowflakes. So um, I love, love, love this set and I use it a lot. If you, if it's something that you feel like you would reach for time and time again, then it's a great thing to add into your stash of product. So I think that's just a judgment call that you have to make is if you would use it that often. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some foam on the back of this. So this is just white white craft foam that I have added sheets of um, score tape. This is five inch score tape to the back. It For me, it's just the most economical way to add a really nice, you know, full panel of foam adhesive to my, to my card. Oh, hi, Carissa. I think I'm just seeing you pop in. I'm so glad that you're joining me. I hope you're feeling better, friend. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned that up in earlier in the comments. I've kind of been looking at my card. Um, but I'm so glad to see you here. And I sure hope you're feeling better. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I'm glad that you think this card's going to be great. I'm super excited, actually, with how it's turning out. Okay, so we've got that going. So let's go ahead and... Um, you know, I'm actually, I think I'm actually to a point where I can go ahead and put this onto its card base as well. Um, and then we won't have to do that when with all of the other layers on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuck down to, this is just a top folding um, A2 white card base, nothing fancy. So let's go ahead and stick this down. 
Okay, I'm not kind of need to see it. So if my hair kind of pops in here, I'm sorry. Let's see. Hopefully, I don't know if you heard that. My little Cocker Spaniel is gruffing about something. Okay, so there we go. So now we can go ahead and adhere down that scalloped frame. I went ahead and just added some thin strips of foam tape to the back of this so you didn't have to watch me tediously do that. Thanks, Barb. I appreciate that. Okay. And so we just want this to be nice and centered. So just take it slow when you adhere it down. Sometimes I go a little too fast and then I get it on there crooked and I get mad about that. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, this is starting to look very fun. I'm loving how it turned out. So sometimes you just never know if something is gonna turn out the way that you envision it to. And this one is definitely, I think it's a kind of exceeding my expectations in a way. Okay, let's go ahead and get the sentiment put down. More foam tape. Yes, you all know we love dimension here at Pinkfresh Studio. Um, you definitely have to add extra postage, but this can still go through the mail. Um, but if you like to keep your cards a little less dimensional, all I suggest is just don't add the additional foam tape. All right. So let's go ahead and tuck happy in here. Yes, yeah, T-square, that makes sense. I just never seem to want to bust that out. And then let's get the new year on here. And I always feel like I'm a little fumbly with T-squares and then like I end up sticking things to the T-square. So sometimes it might just be a little bit better off for me if I, uh, if it's just maybe a little crooked just because I feel like I would make a bigger mess trying to navigate the T-square. Now I do use a T-square often when I'm lining up sentiments and such, um, if I feel like I need it. This one is big enough that I feel like I, I've got a good feel for where it needs to go. And this guy needs to come off there. So that will just lay flat. Perfect. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> yep, quoting Laura Basson, we all go to the school of LB for Dimension is Life. All right, I am going to put this guy over here. Okay, perfect. And then I think I have, I think I have done that where I still have enough place for this to go. But we are going to make these snowflakes a little extra special. And we are going to add some glitter to them. And this one will look quite nice right there. Okay. So let's Okay. So let's go ahead and grab some glitter. Uh, definitely, Roberta, this is handmade, not Hallmark. Um, Jennifer McGuire, I think, said that a while back, and it kind of stuck with me. So it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so the way that I glitter things, this will stay flat, is I will just take a glue pen and lightly coat over whatever it is I'm glittering, whether it's a word or obviously in this case, it's snowflakes and just add a coat of liquid glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it doesn't worry me too much if, um, and then I just stick it in to my thing of glitter 
Oops. I might need to use a little thing to get it out. And I think I've shown how I glittered on a past live, but just showing it again. And then you get this beautiful glittery snowflake. I don't know how well it shows up, but I, of course, will photograph these cards and share them on my personal Instagram, at least um, in the next couple of days or so. <laughs> yes, it is a big jar of glitter. Um, so I think I have gone through that glitter and I think I use that jar now and I just add a combination of both Prisma and Chunky Glitter into it together. So I'm not sure that the glitter is in it is that what the actual brand is on, on the, the jar that I used. Yes, I have typically always have glitter all over this house. I don't mind it, not a big deal to me. So then I'm gonna stick that in there, rub it in there again, shake it off. And there we have beautiful glitter again. Let's honestly don't know how well it shows up, but it's there, I promise. See here. So next, let's go ahead and get these stuck down onto their shadow, shadow layer, the vellum. And I'm going to end up having glitter all over my fingers, but that's okay. I'm not worried too worried about it. Get that on there. I do have a little towel I can wipe off on. Okay, Glenda, good to know that we can call you Glenda. Thank you. All right. These ones I think I like just lined up with the actual shadow layer. Okay. Sorry if I'm not super chatty. I always just feel like I need a little bit of pre precision to do these ones. Okay. And then let me once again, ver oh yeah, that's gonna look super fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere these down. We're I'd like that to kind of, okay. And I just need that to stick. You know what? I think that these might need a little bit of foam just so that they have a little bit of dimension off the top. So let's just go ahead and stick. Oops, of course I have that liquid glue in there now. Okay. I'm gonna just use a little more. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, that's gonna be so much better having them popped up off the background a little bit. So they're not like swooping in that frame. So this one, a little bit better prepared for because I know I'm gonna put the foam on there. All right, now we just like to add a little touch of liquid glue to the foam just to make sure it gets a real good um, adhere or ad adherence, <laughs> whatever. You all know what I mean. Okay, and let's stick that guy down right on the corner. Move it up a little bit because I don't want it to cover that beautiful curve in the R. Perfect. All right. Oh my goodness, about the glitter in the carpet. Uh, we have hardwood floors, so thankfully, um, I mean, I typically have glitter around quite often anyway, because I do like to use glitter and, um, but thankfully we have hard floors, so they do eventually get swept up, vacuumed up, all that fun stuff. Okay, so here we are. With that, so that we've got one final step here. We're gonna just add a little bit of bling to these. I definitely need a little bit of bling in the center of those snowflakes. So let me grab that. Okay, so we are going to 
use the jewels. Okay. I'm sure I want to use the pinks. I might need to grab my other set because I want them to be a little bit bigger. Give me just one second. So I have another thing of, that's my cocker spaniel. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we've got a little bit bigger pink jewels and I have adhesive on my fingers so they keep sticking. So let's add a little bit of liquid glue right in the center of this one and then add pink jewel to the center of it. And same with this guy. Perfect. Okay, so we have a couple of pink jewels. <laughs> yeah, Lori, I'm a little bit of a one show wonder when it comes to adding bling. I pretty much always do. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and add a couple of the gold and a couple of the white. Let's see. Where do I want to put them? I think we want to add a couple right here. And then a couple up here, probably. <laughs> well, thank you, Lori. I do sometimes wonder if people will keep coming back and watching the lives because I kind of tend to do a lot of the same things. All right. I think I like these the other way. There, oh, there my little dogs are good. Roberta, thank you. Just She just, my husband came back upstairs and so she was just excited to see him and then went outside. Okay. So I've got a couple things of bling. I might add some more bling here in a second, but this is where I'm gonna start. I actually think we need one more pink here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Don't love that. Maybe just a smaller pink. Nope, leaving it, leaving it. Okay. Okay, so there is my card for today, friends. Let me get these jewels put away so I don't accidentally knock them over because I am prone to doing that. Yeah, Heather definitely loves to add jewels too. We love jewels here at Pink Fresh Studio. Oh goodness, about spilling a whole jar of glitter. That would be, a, yeah, that would be a bummer. Okay, so there is, whoa, there is the finished card. I somehow ended up with a jewel over here. And that is it. So I definitely am loving the like champagne vibe that this card gives and the winter vibe and New Year's, lots of things you could, Lots of ways you could make this card. You could change out the sentiment. Um, and that is my card for today. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Annalise. I appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed our final live crafty project of 2020. Uh, never fear, we will be back in 2021, of course. I did want to mention that January will be 
a little bit hit or miss because we do have um, some, we do have some online or virtual events that we will be teaching for our retailers. So um, January will be a little bit um, hit or miss on um, what weeks we have full lives. Oh, and it looks like Heather has picked a winner. Congratulations to Lana D. Tabor. You have won today's $15 gift card. So just be sure to email me, and that's Leah at pinkfirststudio.com um, to claim your prize. And just give me two to three days to reply back. So congratulations. <laughs> oh, oh, Becca. Well, um, happy early birthday to you tomorrow. So let me get this, oops, switched around. Okay, it's a little dark here. So my front facing camera has gotten a little grainy, but I hope that you guys have a really wonderful day and uh, wishing you a happy new year. And we will see you on Saturday uh, for craft hour with Jeff um, and a really fantastic guest. So um, hopefully, oh, someone is asking who's moving. Oh. Pink for Studio, we're just moving to a bigger warehouse. So um, we have a, um, that happened today actually, and I have not heard how it's going. So hopefully no news is good news. Um, okay, other than that, I hope that you guys have a really great rest of your week and we'll see you Saturday at 11 a.m. for craft hour.